and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Cliff. Today we're going to talk a lot about UL 60335 and the requirements for it. It's a new safety standard that's coming out and it will replace UL 1995 for most of our products. Today I've got a special guest. I've got Callan Rocky with Engineering and he's going to help answer some questions for us on the new requirements for UL 60335. So with that, let's get started. First off, let's talk a little bit about uh, UL 60335 and UL 1995. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a big change for us. Um, why are we going to UL 60335 and not sticking with the UL 1995 requirements? And so UL 60335 is the new um, kind of like the new UL 1995. UL 1995 is uh, coming to an end uh, in the next year or so, and we have to move on and run testing um, <clears throat> under the UL 60335 requirements to continue to be UL compliant. And so UL 60335 is just the next step in that. Another thing to cover with the UL 60335 requirements is the changes in heat strips and as you can see here we've got a couple heat strips for wall mount products one is the older ul 1995 approved heat strip and then we have the ul 60335 approved heat strip can you tell us some differences between the two yeah absolutely and so for the heat strip itself there are very minimal differences the biggest difference between 1995 and 60335 heat strips will actually be, just be the sheet metal face plate here because they utilize different safety uh, backup safety devices. And so the 1995 uses what we call uh, thermal cutoffs, thermal fuses, where if you think about it, it looks just like a fuse. And so when that trips, it breaks the continuity and it um, makes the heat strip safe, make sure it trips properly. The UL60335 limits, these are, these in, do the exact same thing as what the UL 1995 limits do, but these have a lot larger surface area and they're actually more of a matte finish which catch the glow from the heat strip which allows us to have a little more reactivity and quicker response time um, during electric heat testing. So going forward with the UL 60335 requirements, um, you've had to rerun a lot of the electric heat testing that we've talked about um, and there'll be some electrical differences between the two, basically an MCA and MOCP, correct? Absolutely. And so the MCA and MOP change is more, um, it comes more from the psychrometric uh, testing side of things where we test for our efficiency ratings and everything. And wherever the, whatever the amp draws and uh, different things are, during the psychrometric testing is what really helps determine what our MCA and MOP ratings are. Now, the other side of that is the uh, KWFLA, the actual uh, KW value, and the BTU output. Sure. In theory, between or not in theory, they are actually the exact same part. The only difference is they use different backup limits. And so while we rated them to 240 volt during UL 1995, we are now rating them to 230 volt because it changes what voltage we have to run electric heat testing at. Sure. And since electric heat testing was ran at 230, that's what we're rating them at. And so you might see subtle differences between the KWFLA and the BTU output but nothing is actually different. They're the exact same parts. Sure, and then like a 480 volt will go to 460 volt as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Excellent, thanks a lot. All right, so we've covered three main topics. One is why we're going to UL 60335 and uh, getting away from UL 1995, which it's just one of those things. Uh, things change as far as codes and regulations and requirements. So that will be a big change for us going forward. Uh, we also covered the heat strips and the differences, which are the limits and the thermal cutoffs so that we can show the differences there because that will be a visual change to the customer and something that they'll have to be aware of. Uh, the other thing we covered was that the electrical MCA minimum circuit ampacity and the MOCP maximum breaker size or fuse size will also change. 
which is something to be aware of. So when you're looking at the electrical data between UL 1995 and UL60335, we need to make sure that we've got the right breaker protection, wire size, and all that covered as well. So it's going to be very important to look at those charts. Um, and then also we talked about the KW charts and how these, these heaters will still produce the same amount of heat, but they'll be shown a little bit differently going forward in the specifications. So that covers pretty much everything. Thanks a lot for uh, hanging out with us for another episode of Coffee with Cliff, and uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to you again soon. I appreciate it. Thank you, Cliff.